Welcome to another lesson of machine learning from scratch. Today we're going to learn about random forests, but a lot of the theory we're going to learn in the next couple of minutes is going to depend on the decision trees that we learned before. So if you haven't watched the decision trees lesson, the previous lesson, go ahead and watch that first and then come back here. All right, so basically a random forest is very simply a forest. So it consists of a lot of different trees. And the reason that it's called random is because we introduce some randomness into the equation when creating these trees. So basically what happens is you create as many trees as you determine before you start your algorithm. And once the trees are created, we get their votes of what the class label should be for this data point during inference time. And then we hold a majority vote. Or if it's a regression, we do something else, but we'll learn about that in a second. But basically it's as simple as that. And the thing that makes it random is that we sample uh, the data set into subsets uh, that are randomly created. So just to quickly recap, when we are training the random forest, what we do is we get the subset of the data set randomly, and then we create a decision tree with this random subset of the data set. And then we repeat this process as many times as the number of trees that we want to see. And during inference time, what we do is we get the prediction from each tree. If it's the classification, we hold a majority vote. If it's regression, we get the mean of all the predictions that were sent to us. But that's it. Basically, as I said, depends a lot on decision trees. Uh, but let's use the implementation that we used, it, that we prepared in the previous lesson again for our decision trees. As you remember, it was a little bit long. And build random trees on top of it. All right, let's start with the implementation of random forests. One good news is we're going to use the decision trees class that we created in the previous lesson. You might, if you watched it, you might remember it was a quite long one, but we're going to use everything that we have here in the random forest. So it's actually going to be quite fast. So at first I'm going to create a class, of course, of random forest. Uh, let's initialize it. So what I'm going to have in there, of course, is number of trees first. Uh, and then we're going to have, again, the max depth. Um, min samples split. Number of features. Self number of features. And something to keep all the trees in. And this is just going to be an empty uh, array. So let's start here. Number of trees. Uh, we can start with 10, for example, and then max depth could be 10 again, and then min samples split, let's say it's going to be two for now, and um, number of features, we'll just call none, because otherwise we're just going to get the whole, uh, if you remember, we implemented it in decision trees. If number of features is uh, nothing, then we get it from however many features there is. Uh, let's pass these guys here, max depth here, min sample sample uh, split here, and number of features here. All right, so oh, we also need to pass self. Um, so as before, we're going to have a fit function and a predict function. And that's actually pretty much it for this one. We're not going to have a lot of helper functions this time. Uh, what I need to do is to import decision trees before we forget. All right, so in the fit function, what I need to do is once I initialize this as an empty um, array or empty yeah, list, I guess. So we're going to create as many trees as the value number of trees. Okay, and what we're going to do is basically literally create a decision tree for every single one of them. So what do we need to pass to create a decision tree? Um, min sample split, max depth, number of features, uh, and root is created automatically. That's not something we pass. And yeah, basically these three. All right, well, luckily we have them. Max depth is self max depth many typos today, um, min sample split is self min sample split. And lastly, we have n 
features and that is self and features and I will call this the tree just forgot the commas here all right so we're going to fit this tree um, but we're not going to fit it with all the samples that we have. Yeah, we need to pass the X and Y here also. Uh, so we first need to get some sample of X and Y. We want to sample them. And I'm going to create one, only one helper function for that. So let's create that bootstrap samples. We pass it the self and the X and Y data. Um, now I want to get the number of samples from X. Uh, as I talked about uh, when you do it on a NumPy array, basically the first information that you get is the number of samples, the second is the number of features. So we get number of samples. And then using NumPy, let me import NumPy here. We're going to randomly choose so we're going to choose a number of samples, amount of samples from our uh, number of samples. But the difference is this time we're going to set the replace to true. So after a sample has been selected from the data set, it can again be selected. So what happens is uh, effectively you're dropping some of your samples and you're selecting some of the samples again. So that's why I'm going to select the indices like this and then I will return data set using these indices and yeah that way we have the samples so let's call this here the bootstrap samples we just need to pass x and y to it and we're going to fit our tree with this x sample and y sample and then we're going to append this new tree to the number of uh, to the tree list of trees that we have for training our random forest that's uh, all we need to do we basically create a forest we create a forest full of uh, different types of trees trained on different subsets of this data set. All right, the next thing that we want to do is uh, predict, uh, use this random forest in inference time. We pass it an X, of course, for that. So what's going to happen is for each tree in self trees, uh, is trees, right? Yes, we're going to want this tree to predict for our x and the result oops, the result we will pass uh, make a numpy array out of and call this predictions so once we write this what we get in the predictions is basically a list of lists and one list per tree basically and this list the inner list includes uh, predictions for each sample. So this is for the first sample, second sample, third sample, fifth sample, let's say. And this for the second tree, we have the same first sample, second sample, third sample, fourth sample. Instead, what we want to have is something again, like a list of lists, but we will have um, the prediction for the first sample from the first tree, the prediction from the, for the first sample from the second tree. So all of the uh, predictions for the same sample from different trees need to be in the same inner list. So to do that, there is a nice little NumPy function called swap axis, and I pass it the predictions, and I would like to swap the axis 0 and 1. So let's call these tree predictions. And lastly, we want to get the most common uh, a label. One last, I guess I lied last time. <laughs> we need one more helper function, but we've written that before. So I'm just going to copy and paste it here. Uh, let's write it as a helper function. We're going to use the counter data structure from collections. So from collections, import counter. This is just a uh, data structure that makes it really easy to get the most common um, occurrence of a certain value in a, a counter data structure or an array basically we create the counter data structure from the array and then we use the most common function to get the most common um, occurrence and we basically need to parse it to get the first um, array the first tuple and the first value in this tuple but I explained this better in more detail in some of the previous lessons so if you want to uh, find about that find out about that you can go watch the linear 
either linear regression or log logistic regression regression video, or you can go ahead and check out their uh, documentation, of course. All right, so once we have that, what we need to do is to call this helper function here. Uh, but in our tree predictions, we have predictions for each sample. So instead, we will use four um, tree pred, or maybe to make it less confusing, pred in tree preds. And I will also call this just pred. And let's have this in a list. Enter it into a NumPy array and basically return it for addictions. And it will be returned. But yeah, so that's it. Now that because we're using the decision tree class that we already created, it's actually quite simple. We just create the trees and then we traverse them to get the results here. Um, Let's try this out and see uh, how much of an accuracy we're gonna get. I'm using the breast cancer data set again. Uh, all I need to do here is import random forest from random forest. I kept the accuracy definition. It is uh, where we look at how many times the true value and the predicted value was the same divided by the number of true values. Uh, let's create a random forest. Random forest, oops, let's try again, random forest. Uh, we don't need to pass anything to it immediately. We can just fit it with X train and Y train, and then we calculate the predictions. Um, mm -mm, for that CLF predict, and we pass it to X test. So let's see if we made any mistakes, but first let me calculate the accuracy, and for that we're going to pass it predictions. I oh, know first y test and predictions, and then let's print it. All right, let's see. Awesome. So it uh, looks like it worked. We got a 0 0.91 accuracy here with the random forest. We didn't have any typos, which is surprising because I tend to make typos, but awesome. So as we've seen before in the decision tree lesson two, if you want, you can change the number of trees. You can change the max depth. You can change the min sample split. So for example, let's try with a higher number of trees. Let's see if that's going to give us a better accuracy. All right, we got something slightly higher. I'm not really sure if this is the uh, randomness in it or because we increase the trees, but you can play around with it and you can explore it yourself. Uh, once again, you can find the code that we prepared here on our GitHub repository. The link is in the description. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask them in the comment section below. But this is what's it for me. From now on, Patrick is going to take you through the rest of the algorithms developing ML from scratch. Thanks for watching and I will see you. Well, I will not see you, but Patrick will see you in the next lesson.